Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco. I have the opportunity to uh, work on a rather unusual reel. Uh, it's a pen. It's a pen 15 LD. It's called the Formula. And uh, this reel, I guess, had the misfortune of being the right reel at the wrong time. This reel was introduced in 2001 and it only had a three or four year span, mostly discontinued in 2004 or 2005. The reel was essentially a um, Penn International with a graphite frame and shares a lot of the characteristics with that reel. But why was it the unfortunate timing? Well, right around that time, manufacturers started to introduce the small frame uh, lever drag reels with that used braid and save space and save bulk in the uh, in the reel itself. That coupled with Penn moving the production of most of their reels to China in 2005 kind of sealed this one as uh, a short-lived reel. But we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how to service it. And if you have an international, you'll almost, uh, certainly be able to use what we're doing here to service that uh, that international. And uh, We'll talk a little bit about how the reel is made as we do that. So I'm going to start by removing the screw that holds the cap. And then we'll remove the handle screw and kind of work our way around. We want to get rid of these exterior pieces and parts in order to get to the side plate that will enable us to do the service. While I do that, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of fishing reel service repair. And uh, if you just like fishing reels and like to understand mechanically how those reels are made, how they operate, and uh, how to keep them fishing for a long time to come. Well, I'm taking off the handle. I'm kind of buffing it with a piece of steel wool. And also using some chrome metal polish for that, uh, that buffing. And I'm also taking pictures along the way. So if you're not familiar with the reel, it's always a good idea to take pictures. That way, if you struggle along the way, you can uh, go back and reference those pictures uh, as you go to rebuild the reel. You can also go to the internet. In this case, I've gone to mysticparts.com and I was able to find the schematic diagram that shows the burst of the reel and where all those pieces and parts come from, their orientations, and if you need to order a part, there are parts numbers and, and the like. When I take those pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray so that I can find them when it's time to reinstall. And I also wear a protective glove on my hand to uh, keep the pieces, uh, grease and the like, off to the best that I can. Well, we're going to continue with taking those exterior parts off. And the next one up is the collar that holds that uh, adjuster for your lever drag. That's a preset adjuster and uh, if you are setting a lever drag reel you want to always set the reel in the off position when you go to take the make, make the adjustment. Don't have it in, in, uh, in lever drag mode. I just took those two screws out. I wanted to make sure that they are the same. And then I'll put them in a separate corner of it. I should be able to remove this collar now. That'll go into my parts tray. And then underneath the collar we have this button which we can unscrew. That's your preset adjuster. And there's a little cap. Notice that the cap is, is a hex nut type of a thing. Then your lever can come off. And then we can work with the exterior plate. Now there's some screws hiding under this, so that's the next piece that come off. These are two bump guards here, one for free spool and the other for the max drag set, so they have to come off. And they have these little collars on them for bump stops. Just make sure you keep those together. Dick likes to send me uh, unusual reels. He sent me this one. He suggested I do the video on it, so we're doing the video on it. It seems to be clean. It seems to be working fine. So we're going to go with that. We'll just do a basic cleanup. We'll 
check out everything and we'll certainly uh, work on any issues that may be identified underneath. But given that the reel is about 19 years old now, well, probably time for a service. As I mentioned, we do have a couple of screws underneath. We have four screws that are also holding this side plate on. So we'll take them off. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to lay these on my table as we take them off. And we're going to make sure that the screws are all the same size. And if they're not, we're going to note where those different screws came from. So that's a very long screw. It's going all the way through to the harness lug. I will take it that this one will be the same as well. And I'm not sure if the ones below will also be that. That's why I want to know so that you don't wind up in a situation later where you try to put a long screw in a short hole or vice versa. And it does look like this will be a shorter screw. And we got one more. That would be on this side. And we have a small screw back here as well. So you want to note all those locations. Take a picture. Use your cell phone. Use a digital camera. Use whatever you like. But take pictures along the way. That way it'll help you organize for the reinstallation. So I put the screws go in the bucket. And as I mentioned, there's one more that I see. There's two more that I see. So I guess we have to take those out before we can completely remove the case. Overall, these reels, um, they have a graphite frame, so they're a little bit less rigid than if you were using an international reel. But otherwise, the mechanics inside it are very similar to the single speed internationals of the time. Taking these, taking this side plate off now. whole thing is coming out which is okay. On the back end there's nothing there never is much going on on the back end of a lever drag reel. You simply have a hole fast for your spool. In this case we have a click mechanism. Somebody just asked me a question on that click mechanism. I guess it was on the the, uh, the 310 maybe. Well here's a look at what that click mechanism is. They had a they had an issue there with the click button not going up and down. There's just a little bit of dry grease on this. So we're gonna go ahead and use a penetrating oil to clean that up. Alright, that seems pretty good. I'll just Finish that off with a paper towel there so it's nice and, and clean. And we can set this frame aside. There's nothing really that you need to do with that frame. Again, it's graphite. Now we'll get over to the business end of this. So this simply should pull out and we'll see what's going on underneath them. So we'll deal with the spool assembly in a moment. We have our drive, which I believe is held in with this E-clip here, or C-clip. Let's see if we can get that out. I'm going to need to get a little pliers for that. I'm going to turn this off just so I can go get the pliers. Okay, I couldn't find the pliers, but we're going to come about this a little bit different. We're going to take the main gear off. That should be able to allow me to push the shaft through. Take the button off. We should be able to move the main gear out of the way now. There we go. So main gear is off. I can push that shaft out to do the cleaning on this side. And it looks like we have just some accumulated old grease, which is not unusual for a reel like this. And we'll go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning up on that as well. So while I'm doing that, if you have an interest in uh, a fishing reel, maybe you'd like some more information on, if you want to leave that in the, the comments section of this uh, 
video, I'll try and answer those questions for you. If you're working on a reel in stock, it doesn't have to be this reel. If you're working on a reel in general, maybe something just isn't going the way you thought it was, or maybe you're trying to do some problem diagnosis here and it's not working, if you uh, leave that in the, the question thing, I'll, I'll try and answer that as well. Well, again, I'm going to do a little bit of, of house cleaning here. So much about reel repair and service is just about cleaning, making sure that your reel pieces and parts are all in good condition and that the overall oils and greases are out of the way and freshly brought in for relubrication. And then the other part of it of course is just knowing how, how it comes together, in some cases how it comes apart. We're going to just flood that bearing with uh, oil. Come over that shaft is nice and clean so we can take care of that shaft. A little bit of grease, I'm going to use pen precision real grease. And I use pen grease not because this is a pen reel, but I use it because it's a fishing reel grease. And I would recommend to everyone who's servicing a reel, please make sure that you use fishing reel greases and oils as you do your service. They're designed for marine use and they're designed to keep your reel running easily and in the best condition for a long time to come. We can see from the main gear that there's a lot of old grease and, and dirt and debris on there, so I'm going to go for a hard bristle brush. And then I'm just going to kind of pull it towards me and wipe it on my paper towel that's on my desk. And that's going to help Make sure that I don't transfer the old grease to another project and that I don't put it back in when I go to the next set of indentations. While I'm doing this, I'm checking the orientation of the teeth. I'm making sure that they're all uniform, that none are cracked or bent or in other ways uh, harmed. And, uh, and of course we want to clean off the grease behind. It's a nice solid gear. I'm going to think it probably is, is brass, but I'm not a metallurgist in with all these new types of metallic alloys and compounds these days. It's only a guess. All right, the main gear is clean there. We'll clean the inside. And now we can take the time to do the same thing here. We're going to put some grease onto the teeth. You don't have to put it in each one, and actually if you if you got grease over the entire uh, set of teeth, well, it's just going to squeeze out. So you want to put a good amount, but you don't want to over-grease it. It's just going to spill away. And we can set this up on our post. Once you have the main gear seated, go ahead and put the screw back on. And we'll do a quick review. So we took the screw off. We remove the main gear, we push the shaft of the main gear out, we lubricate it after we clean the shaft, we clean the main gear and we lubricate it, and now this essentially, this side is done, and just give it a, a nice turn, make sure everything's working well. Okay, that's the side the gear structure that we wanted to do. We also lube the back bearing cleaned up the extra grease. Well, the rest of this business end then is on the spool itself. We have two sides of the spool. We have a drag adjuster side and we have the side that's going to anchor into the case. And let's, uh, let's take a look here. It says to unscrew. This is a clockwise or a reverse screw. And you'll notice on here we have the pinion gear on the shaft and we have the uh, click ratchet gear, gear as well. So let's unscrew our drag assembly. And you'll see that we have a drag here. It's in relatively good condition. What we want to do is we want to make sure we clean that. And to clean that you just want to grab a, a little screwdriver or something and remove that. Make sure that the underside 
of that is it's nice and clean. We have some small dirt and grease in here. And also, a little trick, you, you, the top part of the gear, or the drag washer, is the one that takes the, the pressure. The back end of it is just basically sitting in the carrier and, and doesn't have much of a role to play. So we'll show you how to clean this, and then what you want to do is flip it. It's uh, almost like you get a two for one there. So to clean it, we're going to take a, a hard bristle brush. And we're just going to scrape out the greases. I probably should have done that on a paper towel. And you'll see it's all coming out here, all the dirt that's that's built up over time. And you'll see that the cross hatching in this pretty much is uh, being restored. So these these don't wear out very much, but you can see how it's made all the difference in the world in terms of pulling all of that off. And here's your new side there, and, and there's not much difference. We're going to flip it over. With the uh, gears removed, we're going to take that spring out. Now we should be able to pull the... Oh, we have one more... Uh, we have a little e-clip there. All right, once you get it up, just clear it. You don't want to spread this to, to clear it. You want to spread it to pull it out of its little groove and then slide it up. That way you won't disform this clip. Clip off, you should be able to remove your axle shaft. I like to poke that um, washer th uh, burring through so that I can clean the cavity. And give me access to the back end here. Notice on the back end of this shaft, you don't need to do anything. These are tension washers. They're going to provide the tension for the uh, sensitivity of that lever drag. And they're not flat washers, they're concaved. In this case, you've got them flat to flat and you've got a space in the middle. There's four of them there. Wipe down that shaft and then we'll take this off so that we can deal with the burring inside here. You don't need to take this off, but we're just going to take it off to show you. We can flood that burring uh, with some oil. We'll do that here. These are shielded burrings. They're not sealed burrings. And flooding them generally will relude them. I'm going to take the four of these screws off just to show you the internal piece here. So lever drags work by having a pressure plate pull this axle shaft that we're working on forward to engage the pressure plate with the drag washer. And as you release, it lets go, and then letting go, it uh, provides that, that base. Well, here's your other washer. Again, as, as I mentioned, didn't need to take it off. We your other bearing, I said washer. I'll just flood this, but I did want to show you how that came apart in case you needed to replace that and also kind of what's inside. All right, I'll we'll just put these back together. You can put a light coating of grease on this. This is where it's going to go through the bearing. So just grab that grease brush. Go ahead and reinstall this. And of course, we have the bearing up top that's going to go in next. And then we have that little clip that's got to go into that. There's a groove there. You want to get that clip. And again, when you take this, just make sure that you get it to the point. There we go. We're all locked in. That was easy enough. Next up, we want to grab our pressure plate. And then we have our assembly here which is uh, the cap that goes back on it. So we want to take our ring, push in, and remember this is reverse threaded. So it's coming back this way now. And just be careful, make sure that you're, you're not cross stripping this as you go to thread. This is a hand tighten, there's no tool for this. 
Just hand tighten it nicely and uh, put a little bit of uh, grease back onto your pinion gear. This is your clicker mechanism, that doesn't require the grease. And we can reseat this now. And when you go to reseat this, make sure that you get that uh, hex nut configuration into the cavity uh, below. So, next step then is to merge our uh, case with the spool. And you have that click ratchet there, so you're going to have to move your spool so that it moves the dogs here so that you, uh, you're set for the anti-reverse. So let's, uh, let's mesh these together. There you go. You, you can hear now that you have that. And that's the, uh, the little trick if there's a trick to this. Just make sure that you uh, rotate this as you're putting that on so that you can lock in the uh, pieces. All right, with that in now, we have two long screws that belong up top. I'm going to use one of them. And then we have the short screws, which go on the bottom. And again, if you were concerned about that, or if you've forgotten which way they went, well, go back to your pictures. And in worst case, go consult the schematic diagram. And that'll tell you where they belong. And then, of course, the very two small screws belong on the bottom on the back. So inside this reel is very, very similar to what you're going to find on that Penn International Gold Series fishing reel. So if you can do this one, you can do the International. And, of course, vice versa if you've been doing the International. This one uh, pretty much is, is by the book. You'll find a little bit different uh, setup in that uh, throw mechanism on the lever drag, if I remember, but not a lot. Nothing that'll throw you out of sync and kind of get you confused. All right, we have another of the short screws that belongs on this side. I'm going to take a moment, we'll show you how that lever drag is going to work then. To give you uh, the pressure plate and how it engages with the drag. All right, that's those two. I want to do the two more in the back. And uh, I did encourage questions before, but it, it never hurts to, to continue to do that for you. And if you do have questions, please leave them in the comments section. I do try to respond to most. Uh, this isn't a 24-7 helpline here, but I do try to to answer the questions over time. Normally I'll try in the morning uh, before I come into my shop. I'll try and give you an answer then. So if you uh, if you leave a question in the afternoon, it may be 24 hours before you get there or you get my thoughts and hopefully I can give you an answer on those. But uh, don't despair, I do try to answer them for you. And just finishing up that last screw. Okay, so there's a ramp here. You may or may not be able to see it. There's corresponding cavities, ramps on both sides. And when your lever drag arm starts moving up these ramps, it will be pulling this stud, which is our axle shaft, out towards you. When it pulls it out, what it's doing is it's pulling this spool in contact with that pressure plate, and that pressure plate is what's going to create the drag tension that you have with this reel. So important to note that's how that works. Here's your ramp on the back. I'm going to start by putting the ramp on. You can see that the two corresponding ramps, and when you seat these, again, you're going to want to do that by making sure that the, um, the reel is in the neutral position. Let's take that cavity off first. Remember what we said, you have these two bump washers that go on the bottom of that screw.
and it's impossible to put this plate on backwards because of the indentations for the, the Max. I just want to check right now, hopefully we can get this over that. Yes, we can. All right. It's always a good idea to check there. Sometimes you won't be able to get that set up. If that's the case, you want to put the trip lever arm on before you put the trim ring back on. Okay, we have those two. And this is where that parts tray is very helpful. Because you can start looking in your parts tray now and figuring out where you are with this. We have that uh, six-sided adjustment. You want to make sure that locks in. And then you can begin tightening down with this. You don't need to tighten all the way down. We have a trim ring to put on next. Those two rough threaded or coarse threaded screws are what belong in this tie down. Getting close to the point now where we're pretty much done with the servicing of this reel. Okay, those two are down. We have the trim ring which belongs over the stud of the handle. We have our handle. Handle screw. Tighten that down. The same wrench that you would use on a 4-0 or a 6-0 senator works on this one. Have that tie-down cap or hold-down cap. And generally, if that uh, cavity or that uh, sink scallop in that nut is pointing towards the screw hole, generally speaking, that will enable you to put the tie-down screw in for that hold fast. Okay, so right now we should be in free spool mode. We are over here in free spool, and the spool should spin, and that's all it should spin. And now we're going to work on adjusting this. So let's bring that up. Well, you don't have much going there yet. And we do have the spool turning the handle now. But that's not max drag. You're going to be able to hold your hand on here and turn the handle. So you need a little bit of adjustment on this. Bring it back to free spool. Turn your adjuster level a couple of turns. And it's just trial and error. Now you've got the turn on that first strike, and over here you're in max drag. So that's a properly set reel, and that's how to work on the Penn Formula 15 LD lever drag reel. And Dick, thank you for sending that in. I hope everybody's enjoyed learning how to do this one, learning a little bit of the history of that reel. And as with every, every reel, when it's not in use, you should back it off to the point where the drives are not attached. And uh, I know a lot of folks uh, worry that uh, if you do that, the line is going to untangle. I've seen some clips where you can clip it onto the harness lug and other things. Just be aware of that. If you need to, just, you know, you can put it into the drag to stop that. But here's a better trick. If you leave it in the free spool and you put the click lever on, that's going to hold it enough that you won't lose the tension on that uh, on that spool to have that come un unspun. So there you go. That's the uh, Penn Lever Drag Formula 15 LD. I hope you've enjoyed it. To everybody who's in, uh, keeping us safe during the pandemic, the first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you're doing. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.